So welcome, welcome back to the academic track. We have a second talk, and the presenter is Nikola Milojevic from the Mercator Research Institute on Global Commons and Climate Change. You have 20 minutes for the talk, and please. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me well? Um, okay, so this is a collaborative work where we try to um, help cities uh, reduce the energy use in building. Uh, in the context of mitigating climate change, and this is uh, a work in progress, so um, I will mostly be presenting a framework and experiments more than final results, and, uh, and I will also focus uh, on the, our use of the OpenStreetMap data in our framework. So um, I want to talk about three things today. Uh, first is why uh, are we using OpenStreetMap data, uh, and this is because uh, it's a great source for us to find uh, data on infrastructure. Um, then uh, uh, the, the second thing is that as a sustainability researcher, when, uh, f like there are certain features in OpenStreetMap that we would like to have um, and for which the, the coverage is currently limited. And so the first third thing is going to, uh, I will show you how we try to use machine learning to predict these features. Um, so first at all, why are we interesting in uh, infrastructure? Um, because infrastructure frames, to a large extent, energy use in cities. Um, so uh, infrastructure can lock people uh, in certain uh, habits, and that can be a problem if these habits are unsustainable. For instance, for mobility, uh, if you have the, uh, the highways to the left, it's hardly, like, it's difficult to move in the city without taking a car. Well, if uh, you have these bike lanes to the right, then it enables people to, to take the bike. Uh, and that's the same thing for, uh, for buildings. Uh, if you have large rooms, uh, then you need a lot of energy to um, eat and cool those, those rooms. While if you have smaller rooms, uh, it, it requires less. And so I, I live myself in an old building with uh, high ceiling. It's really nice, but it's, it's not energy efficient. And um, at the end of the year, if we sum up all the energy that we use for building and transportation, it's about 60% of uh, all our energy demand which translate into uh, more or less 50% of the greenhouse gas emission that we use to produce energy, so that, that we uh, emit to produce energy. So that's, that's really a lot, and uh, our use of uh, building and transport infrastructure are really um, key contributors to climate change. Um, and, um, and so this, this demand, this energy demand, is expected to keep on growing while we are still struggling to to make this energy uh, um, production um, decarbonized. So we really need to, uh, to reduce our energy use. And we new, uh, need to do that very fast, because we basically have uh, something like 30 years to uh, get to zero net emissions if we want to remain um, to, um, below 1.5 degree of uh, global uh, mean temperature increase. Um, and uh, yeah. And, um, and in order to do that, like one of the um, uh, solutions that we think can be uh, really uh, efficient is to, uh, to use infrastructure planning as a way to reframe the energy demand of c in cities. So this is uh, about uh, uh, dealing with our current infrastructure and also uh, designing uh, the, the new addition, both in, in order to, to help people having a lower carbon lifestyle. Uh, and um, policy makers, in, in order to, uh, to design policies for that, they need information, they need information on like, where is the energy use, uh, uh, what, uh, what is the reason for a certain energy use, and how much energy use is there in their cities. So they, they need geographical models to, to, to see that. And, uh, and in addition, if we can have common frameworks with models that are ap applicable to different cities, then we can compare uh, the problem and the solution in different cities. Uh, so that's where we want to, 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 to do something. And so currently, uh, for buildings, uh, there is a, a certain gap uh, between a, a lot of studies that are looking at buildings at the, really at the building level. Um, and, um, uh, other studies that uh, work at a much more aggregated level. So uh, there is a gap in the literature in having uh, building uh, energy models for buildings that are both at the building level but at the um, city scale. So uh, our framework, in, in our framework, we try to have uh, 
uh, b building energy models uh, for all city where we have individual buildings. Um, so first start as a, a 3D model where you can see each building and then uh, for each uh, building we, we try to compute the energy use. Uh, as, and so uh, during the rest of the talk I will focus on the first part how we use OpenStreetMap data to generate uh, the 3D building model. And so just as a note, uh, the reason, one of the reasons why uh, most of the uh, models so far are at the building level is that because it's very difficult to uh, compute the energy use of a building. So uh, in our framework, which we try to make it uh, very simple and have very simplified uh, metrics. So, um, and then uh, like have a modular framework that could be uh, um, make made more complex later. And so uh, for an, as an example, uh, so far we just look at uh, the um, energy use for heating and cooling. Um, so, um, so if we want to have a um, model for each building in a city, we thought that uh, OpenStreetMap is, a, is a, a very nice opportunity uh, to, to start the model with like, the, the data. So, uh, um, so the, the 3D model that we try to do first here is like at the LOD1. So this is basically like a footprint multiplied by a, a single height value for a building. Uh, and the, the rationale here is that we basically want to get the volume of the building that you need to eat and cool. And we also need to have the, the surface of outer walls because this is where uh, you have thermal loss. And so the, these two elements are uh, important to compute the energy use. Uh, we have different sources of high data, um, remote sensing, cadaster, and particular LIDAR data uh, can uh, provide uh, accurate models, uh, but it's, uh, it's expensive and it's, on, uh, it's only limited to few cities uh, that the, the financial means to have such models. So, uh, so can we use OpenStreetMap? Uh, and so in OpenStreetMap we basically have uh, uh, many of the footprints, but um, and the heights are stored in the key height. Uh, but it turns that this uh, key is rather sparse. Uh, so we have 12 million uh, key heights filled uh, worldwide. And so this is more or less 25 times the, the size of a city like Berlin. So, so the question was, can we predict other, other heights uh, out of this data? Uh, so I will show you the, 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 the IDAR available in OpenStreetMap in uh, Europe. So we have more or less 1.5 million uh, building with heights in OpenStreetMap in Europe, uh, where it's quite heterogeneous. Uh, Italy, uh, Germany, and France are the top one, but uh, in all Scandinavia and in all the Balkans, uh, there is uh, about the same number of buildings that you have in Heidelberg that would have height in, uh, in each country. So this is uh, quite little. Now if we zoom, uh, for instance, in Germany, uh, we see that uh, building can be fairly well distributed. Uh, the building with heights can be fairly well distributed. So this is important in the context of a prediction because that gives us uh, heterogeneity uh, of, of a different context. But if we zoom even more on Berlin, we see that it's uh, quite a small proportion of the buildings that have heights. Uh, and this is the case in, uh, yeah, in most, for most cities. Uh, but still, we have uh, many cities in Europe where we have, uh, where the whole city is, is pretty much uh, mapped with height. So this is in particular the case uh, in uh, northeastern uh, Italy, where we have, uh, uh, in, yeah, in, even in remote region, uh, a good mapping. And uh, another interesting point for us here is that we have really points, uh, we are really have cities with some points uh, in various geographies in Europe. Uh, we have in Mallorca, up to Belarus, um, Norway, uh, Istanbul, so that's, uh, that's uh, very different. Last point on the data is, of course, the quality. Uh, and so the, the question is here, uh, are the, uh, do we have representative samples uh, in the OpenStreetMap data about the, the real distribution of heights in Europe? Uh, so here I give an, uh, again an example of Berlin. Uh, so the top chart is the official, uh, the, the distribution of the official data, and the uh, uh, bottom one is uh, the one in OpenStreetMap. So uh, first question here is like, is there a, a, a selection bias? Because uh, mappers could 
tend to map a specific building more than others, for instance, uh, more iconic or central buildings, and here uh, we see that, um, for instance, there is a lack, of, uh, there is like the um, building between five and 12 meters are a bit uh, underrepresented. Uh, then um, the second question is, uh, what, is the, uh, what is the definition that we take of a building? And so for us, a, a building that is interesting is a building where there is an energy consumption. And so in Berlin, I removed like this 2,600 two uh, objects because they were stones of a million monument that, do not, uh, that are not relevant in, in our uh, consumption of a building. And also um, in OpenStreetMap, large complex buildings can have different uh, objects, each with a, a single height. So in this case, we need uh, to merge. Uh, these, uh, these different objects. Uh, and uh, the last issue is, uh, of course, that there can also be wrong entries or different level of precision. So we have certain cities where uh, we have heights only by five meter interval uh, versus other uh, cities where uh, it's continuous. So we need to account for all this. But altogether, uh, if we look again at the distribution, uh, the good news is that we have um, data for uh, each building level, but uh, we also have to be aware that like, it's uh, very noisy. Uh, so from that, we'll try to um, predict building heights. Uh, and so um, the goal is to use machine learning to predict heights across Europe. And uh, for this, using only um, predictive features that we compute for OpenStreetMap and train those features uh, on uh, all available IDERA from OpenStreetMap and also from uh, other uh, sources. So there has been already similar work um, at the regional level uh, for the whole uh, USA um, and find on GitHub uh, OpenCD model. Uh, so they uh, use also a machine learning approach where they map uh, the footprint to the, to the height. Uh, but they do not report accuracy, and, and in fact, they, um, they say that they expect that the model is rather good uh, on, on average, but that it's not so good for dense uh, urban regions that are very important for us. Uh, and uh, Bileki and colleagues also uh, did it in a scientific paper, uh, like an, uh, more systematically uh, for two Dutch cities. And so for this uh, similar type of model where they map um, the, the footprint to the height, they, find they have an error around three meters, and uh, their best model in which they use the number of floors uh, goes down to uh, less than one meter error. Uh, so in our case, we, uh, we, we do something similar. We uh, try to map uh, different features about, about a building uh, um, that are, um, so, so we try to map a different building uh, feature about the building to the heights using a machine learning regressions, and these features are either about the building itself or the surroundings. And uh, here, the idea is to, to, to that um, there is a local context within a, a, and uh, around buildings that we may be able to to harvest for prediction. And so, uh, all these uh, features we. Uh, uh, found them in a way that they can be computed for any building in OpenStreetMap, so there must be a simple uh, geometrical operation on polygons or lines. Um, so it's scalable. And then, so it is supervised learning, so we uh, train for the buildings for which we have heights, uh, th these uh, features to uh, the, the actual height so that we get the parameters. And then uh, once the, the model is uh, fitted and uh, carefully uh, validated, they may be used to, it might be used to uh, predict uh, the height for building that don't have it. Um, so uh, I will show you a, uh, an example. So this is uh, just as an example. These are not uh, definitive results. Um, so uh, I used the uh, random forest with uh, um, really standard settings. And I tried to predict uh, for two cities, uh, so a Czech city and an uh, um, Italian city. I tried to predict the, the heights uh, within and across the two cities. Um, so the, the two cities are like, um, have uh, both more than 20,000 uh, buildings with heights. And they, so they have like a 
standard deviation of less than five meters, so the, the data is rather concentrated uh, uh, below 10 meters. And the two cities have a rather similar uh, uh, distribution, although uh, they are also a bit different. So this is, uh, uh, a priori, we, we can think that it could work, but it could also not work. So uh, here are the results within cities. Um, so if we look at the error, it's between two and three meters. And now if we look at the distribution of the error, so on the x-axis you have the predicted values, on the y-axis you have the real values, and the uh, blue line is the point where the predicted value equals the real value. So if we are on that line, it's good. Uh, the further away we are from that line, the further it's either under or uh, over predicted. So for those two cities, we have uh, uh, points that are rather next to this um, uh, lines. And if you look at the Italian city, uh, we see that most of the points uh, are actually predicted in this corridor of like plus or minus 2.5 meter. Um, but now if we look across city, uh, so for the, um, uh, so, so those cities, uh, th those uh, results are uh, prediction made of a city with a model that will be trained on the other city. So for, uh, for the Czech city, it's the, the, the error seems uh, not, not too bad, but actually when you look at the distribution, we see that uh, the model doesn't get it right uh, in, in like almost never. And it's actually uh, predicting almost everything to be five meter, and for the other, uh, is the similar thing that is happening. So, um, so we see that uh, the, the generalization didn't work. So this is really like uh, something that is uh, that is very tricky, and uh, on which we are working. So the, there there is some research on like what are the conditions for um, specialization within uh, special models, and. Uh, and so the different things that we are uh, uh, looking at is like um, which kind of sampling do, uh, could be uh, better, like do we need to develop specific models that are good at uh, um, predicting in urban settings versus uh, rural, is it something that has most, most something to do with the region, etc. And then uh, also the work in uh, finding the right algorithm. Uh, finding the right features that do not uh, overfit, for instance, um, uh, coordinates uh, tend to overfit, and also uh, using uh, uh, procedures to validate the model, uh, such as special cross-validation instead of uh, random cross-validation. Uh, a few last points before concluding uh, <coughs> for um, some implication. So in this kind of um, uh, of exercise, every building uh, map counts, uh, is, and specifically the building in uh, low data settings are most important. So uh, the, the big uh, issues we will have um, our infrastructures are like uh, specifically in the global south. So uh, for instance, in Africa, there are very few buildings with, uh, with height. So uh, these buildings are even more important. And um, the number of uh, floor uh, is also like a, a very good predictor that is easier to map than uh, building heights. Uh, and it's interesting that it's, uh, there are as many buildings in OpenStreetMap that number of floor as building the uh, uh, heights. So yeah, just to conclude, uh, the infrastructure data of OpenStreetMap is really of high relevance for us. And so uh, we are very grateful of the, the, the great work that is done by the, the OpenStreetMap community. And so, um, so yes, as a sustainability researcher, we would love to get closer from, uh, from this community and find ways to uh, um, are mutually uh, 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 productive for, for, the, for sustainability and for open Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nicola. Are there questions? Thank you. Um, it's, uh, I appreciate that LiDAR is difficult to get hold of, but uh, standard aerial imagery should be good for predicting heights, should it not? Mm -hmm. You plan to use that? Uh, yes, I mean, this, this, so, we, so far we are using OpenStreetMap because this, this is the easiest data because everything is well structured already, but it, uh, it, it comes with more, more errors. Mm -hmm. So um, 
yeah, we this is like we're trying to see if also if we can combine the different uh, type of data. Mm. Uh, so, for instance, with uh, yeah, stereo uh, IR Im uh, images can can be an option. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sat satellite images is then like more complicated, but. Uh. Other questions? Thanks. Interesting talk. And uh, my question is about insulation. How do you account for that? Because like, if I insulate an uninsulated building, suddenly the footprint is like a, I don't know, an, a fifth or a fourth of... You mean of the, the energy footprint, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. So far it's, it's really like a very, very um, a simplified metrics where we just try to say in a certain scenario, if we assume that all buildings in this area would be the same, what would be the, the energy footprint. Uh, and then, so that, that's why I was saying that it's so first is a very simple framework, and then if we get uh, information on the building types, then we would add it. So this is, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I had a question. Um, since you also use uh, the context as feature to predict the building height, um, then would the, this, this, I can expect that there are other indicators for the, to, to describe the context, like, mm -hmm socioeconomic development, uh, things like this, because that influence, right? Uh, yeah, like the, mm -hmm. the only issue is that we are trying to find also features that we can find everywhere, like for instance in Europe, the, where we have the data everywhere, but, uh, and also that it's really at the block level. Um, but yeah, all, all sort of, uh, I mean, this is for, for sure probably very well correlated, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, but it's a city level, yeah, it's not yeah. the best. Uh, yeah. It's okay. Um, so the, you, you've been talking mostly about the, the building heights. Are there any other tags you would like us to add? Um, yeah. So, like, um, of course, the, like one. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually. So I've been focusing a lot on this tag, so I'm not sure. <laughs> um, like for instance, one thing that is very important for uh, in buildings is like how many uh, windows there are on the on the building. I don't know if this is something that is tagged in OpenStreetMap, <laughs> uh, but apparently not. <laughs> Other questions? Yes. Uh, a quick question. You showed that the building height is different than the official the uh, real height and that can be bias in the data. Uh, have you looked at like what part of it is noise of the data? Because if there is a lot of noise there, all the predictions also. So your question is which, which are the source of, no of noise, right? Yeah, any idea how much noise we have? How much? OSM? Yeah, so uh, my rough estimation for Berlin, I, I haven't, and then he has, like it's city specific, right? Uh, it's, like, it's more or less between 10 and 20% that of the, the that, are, are, that do not have the right uh, height. But this is really a rough, uh, uh, I, I haven't finished this analysis yet, but yeah. So that, which will have like quite a good number of buildings that uh, are good. And, they, they, and you can also see from like certain cities where everything has, be, has been mapped, seems to have been mapped by the same entity, then you can have more confidence. So this is specific. But uh, that, there can be cities where you have uh, a lot of noise. Thank you. Any other quick question? Yes. You, you trained the models on two different cities and applied them to the uh, other cities. Uh, do you think it would make sense to train models for certain parts of the town, like an old town or suburbs, and do you think that this way you could um, get better results when applying them to other cities? Yeah, sure. Uh, the, then, then we would need to have a, a way to find in the cities to know which, which part are which part. Um, but that, yeah, that definitely sounds uh, something that would help. Okay, thank you. Any other Question. Okay, I would like just to close with a remark. You already said that, but this is a very clear example of 
how much each single mapper can do for some scientific applications. And sometimes a great thing of OSM is that some data added by a mapper can be used for other applications that the mapper could even not think of. So thanks. Every building counts. And this is really important here. So thanks again, Nicola, and uh, thank you for participating in this session.